I'm back with another vlog and it's again about Sri Lanka. I visited Sri Lanka back in February of this year, just before lockdown began and it was the most magical trip to kickstart 2020. Um, unfortunately, I haven't travelled since due to coronavirus, but I have all of the experiences and memories of that trip that have been keeping me going over the last couple of months. If you're an adventurous person like myself, then Sri Lanka is an absolute bucket list experience to add. It is one of the most magical countries I've ever been to and I've travelled to over 38 countries over the last decade. It reminded me a lot of a mixture of Asia and India um, with the cultures intertwining, the food, the people and just the most incredible experiences I've ever come across. Sri Lanka is a gem of the Indian Ocean and has so many languages, cultures, cuisines and the most friendly people I've ever come across. The country offers some of the most amazing experiences, whether it's wildlife, adrenaline or culture. Here are 10 epic things to do whilst in Sri Lanka. Number one, climbing Pudurangula Rock. One of my favourite things to do whilst we were in Sri Lanka was climbing Pidurangula Rock with the most epic views of Segura Rock across the valley. We did this trek at sunrise, so we headed on around 5am and we climbed the rock. It took about 30 minutes and cost about $3, but it was so worth it with the most incredible views at sunrise across both to Segura Rock and also the valley to the farmsteads and the rice paddies. We opted to climb Pidurangula Rock, but of course you could climb Segura too. I would recommend doing Pidurangula at sunrise and Segura Rock at sunset if you really want to make the most of being in this area. Number two. A bucket list experience for me whilst we were in Sri Lanka was going on an elephant safari. And this lived up to every expectation. We jumped on a Jeep in the mid afternoon and went on an afternoon slash evening safari in Manira National Park. It was one of the most magical experiences and we saw over 50 wild elephants whilst on our jeep tour. The cost of the jeep tour was pretty expensive at around $75 to $100 per person uh, but it did last around 3 to 4 hours and we even got to extend ours a little bit into the evening as well with our amazing jeep driver. I absolutely loved cruising through the national park with the jeep roof off and camera in hand looking out for all of those incredible animals as well as herds of elephants. Number three, Nine Arch Bridge in Sri Lanka just outside Ella is another bucket list experience spanning 91 meters across and 24 meters in height. It's one of the most iconic Instagram shots of Sri Lanka there is at the moment. Uh, you can just go on Instagram and type in Sri Lanka and you will see hundreds of these shots. The bridge was originally built in the colonial period to transfer tea from the hills to Colombo to be exported, but obviously ever since it's been a more of a train to just get tourists and locals from one end of Sri Lanka to the other. Um, and the bridge is just the most beautiful bridge I've ever seen. It does remind me of the Glenfinnan Viaduct as well in Scotland. My advice for visiting the bridge would be to go early. Uh, they do have timetables for when the trains run, so I would check this the day before and see if you can capture a train coming across the bridge at the perfect time. Number four. The fourth thing to do whilst in Sri Lanka related to being on a train is to take the train from Ella to Kandy. It is said to be one of the most epic train journeys in the world, passing through farmsteads, tea paddies, rice paddies and more and you even get to go through some of the most adorable towns and villages along the route. The route takes about six hours from Candy to Ella or Ella to Candy depending on which way you decide to go um, and you can also stop off during the route in a small town called Norelia. We got on the train at Candy and got the train straight down to Norelia where we got off for a night before carrying on our journey. Our train tickets cost around $10 for the entire journey, which is around four hours to Norelia and then another two to three hours to Ella. There are three tiers of train seats on trains in Sri Lanka, first, second and third class. We opted for first class so that we would have our own re reserved seats so that we could put our suitcases and our bags, but many people go for the cheaper option and that's only a couple of dollars. 
Number five. Something that we hadn't originally planned to do was climbing and hiking in the Matal and the Knuckles mountain range. It was one of the most incredible experiences that we hadn't planned for. We got up early, jumped in our taxi and headed into the mountains. We headed to one of the most iconic hiking routes in Sri Lanka, which is hiking at Mini World's End, which offers some of the most amazing views of the valley below. We also then spent the afternoon hiking through some of the smaller villages and towns and we even stopped for lunch at a local's house and they were the most accommodating people I've ever met. They'd cooked us lunch with an, a, a, an absolute spread of food and it was just incredible. It was so nice to sit down and chat with local people living in the mountains. Number six. Another thing that I would really recommend to do whilst in Sri Lanka is go to a tea plantation. We visited Pedro's tea plantation just outside Norelia and it was incredible. We got to go into the tea factory and learn about how tea is made, literally from how they pick it off the leaf and off the plant to how they chill it, heat it and get it ready blended for tea production and then the bo they even showed us the crates that they send out from Norelia to Colombo to the rest of the world. It was a really interesting tour and I'm so glad I did it because I drink a lot of tea being British um, and a lot of the tea that comes from Sri Lanka ends up in Europe and the UK. Once the tour was over we also got an opportunity to go wandering through the tea fields and we met a couple of tea pickers on the way and it was great to chat to them and find out more about what they do. Number seven. So you cannot come to Sri Lanka without going to the capital city Colombo. Colombo is an overwhelming but interesting city and it's well worth at least a day or two exploration. We arrived in Sri Lanka quite late on our first day so we only had a couple of hours the following morning to explore this wonderful city before we started heading off into the middle of Sri Lanka. I would add a trip to Colombo either at the start or the end of your trip in Sri Lanka. It's quite close to the airport being only around 45 minutes from the city centre to the airport which is near Nagumbo so I would do it either side to make use of and be time efficient. While staying in Colombo I would recommend making sure you book a hotel with a pool. Some of the best hotels in Sri Lanka are located in Colombo so make sure you have a little Google and see what you can find. Number eight. Instagram has made many places around the world famous over the last decade but one of those in Sri Lanka is Dawala Rope Swing. Located in a hotel literally just off the beach, it's not run by the tourist board or any other businesses minus the small hostel on the beach. It's now one of the most popular things to do in Sri Lanka and you can certainly see why if you visit at sunset. The rope swing is actually in a hotel called Dream Cabana and you can get access to it from the beach but I would recommend going through the hotel, grabbing a drink, watching sunset and then heading to the rope swing. The rope swing is around about 15 minutes outside of Gaul so if you're heading to Gaul for some relaxing time by the beach make sure you add this place to your list. Number nine. If waterfalls are your thing, then Sri Lanka is the perfect place for you. Sri Lanka has some of the most incredible waterfalls I've ever seen and we visited around four whilst we were touring around Sri Lanka. The, one of the best though is Dirilama Falls and now I don't know if I've said that right, I don't, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but it is one of the most beautiful and you can even go paddling at the top of the falls and it offers some of the most incredible views of the surrounding areas and valleys. The 220 meter high waterfall is the second tallest waterfall in Sri Lanka and takes around 40 minutes to hike. You do have to park if you come in a taxi at the bottom of the hill before heading up on the hike to the top. At the top you'll find some of the most beautiful cascading falls where you can chuck on your swimming costume and have a little dip. And finally number 10. If hiking is your thing then Sri Lanka is also for you because we did some of the most beautiful hikes I've ever done. Hiking Little Adams Peak is one of the most spectacular hikes whilst you can do in Sri Lanka. It's around 20 minutes outside Ella and is a beautiful hike with lots of trails from the bottom of the mountain to the summit where you can then rest at the top and take in the views. It's a fairly easy hike and the route is marked the entire way as it's such a popular route these days with tourists that the tourist board and the government decided to map out this hike as an official hike. You won't find hordes of people here so it's really great. You could even take a picnic or pack lunch and enjoy the views at midday. I hope you enjoyed this video. I absolutely adore this country and I cannot rave about it enough. 
if you are looking for an adventure to take in 2021 I would 100% recommend Sri Lanka. I'm hoping to head back there next year as well and explore more of the regions that I didn't get a chance to explore in February. Um, I'd love to have, head to Yala National Park and go on a safari again as well as spending a little bit more time in the beachside towns and villages as well and maybe even learn how to surf. So if you love this video, please hit the like button. And if you want to see more videos like this, please hit the subscribe as well. There'll be lots more videos coming in the next couple of weeks, including lots on mental health, um, how I've been coping during lockdown, as well as a few other hidden travel vlogs that I never got around to publishing before. So stay tuned, stay safe, and I hope I'll see you soon.